Hello, Scott here, and welcome to yet another completely unprofessional unboxing. And before we get into this book, uh, just a couple things. Uh, first off, uh, I am utilizing a new microphone configuration. Uh, the Blue Yeti that I have uh, works okay, but um, it does pick up a lot of ambient noise, and so I was looking to use a more dynamic microphone to see if this might help improve the sound quality. Um, so if there's, if it sounds good, drop a, drop a comment, uh, send me a message, um, let me know. Let me know if it sounds okay, and um, you know any suggestions on improving it, if there is any issues, would definitely be appreciated. Um, so additionally, uh, as far as improving this particular channel, the other thing that I'm going to be utilizing is a suggestion from a friend. Uh, not the format. The format's going to still stay you know, pretty much the same. Uh, but as far as how I'm going to be posting them on YouTube, slightly different. Just to see if it might help uh, increase the uh, reach of these videos and you know, see if, if, if it works a little bit better. Uh, I'm doing this for fun, uh, but definitely I would like for more people to see them and if they in enjoy them or if they, more importantly, uh, find out about any of the games that I, uh, and books that I show on here that they may have not heard about before or provide a little bit of extra information for them if they were deciding to get it. Uh, but anyways, so uh, this particular uh, box right here uh, comes all the way from the UK. A uh, little story behind it is it's, it's a very rare book here in the States. Uh, not necessarily a gaming book, uh, but what it is, it's definitely a book that has provided inspiration uh, for several of the gamers over there in the UK and also the creators too. Um, it's something that I've you know just recently found out about, definitely interested in, but impossible to find here in the States and damn near impossible to, to purchase over there in the UK just because of the collector prices. But with the help of a friend online, Lee, thank you, Lee, um, he was able to, pro to find this book uh, at some sort of uh, wholesale outlet that sells primarily to uh, hotels and other areas, you know, just, just to fill up you know, the background or the area with, with generic books. They had this for $30, I believe, maybe $35, and free shipping. <laughs> free shipping to the states this this box so uh how they do that i have no clue but um my bane or their their bane my boon uh anyways so uh enough prattling on with with all of this uh fa -la -la. let's let's go ahead and open this up and see what is inside i have my trusty coleman steak knife here but don't need it apparently so we'll go ahead and sip this open Gently unfold it a little bit. It is safely packed. Ooh, it's a big book too. I hope this fits on the screen. Ugh. Yes, that is the place. Country House Library. So if you're looking for books and you're not sure uh, you know, if you've you've run around many, many places and you're don't really want to deal with collectors' prices, go to their website. Uh, they might have something there that you're looking for. All right. Here we are. Ooh, that is huge. There we go. All right. So what we have here is <clears throat> Folklore, Myths, and Legends of Britain. Uh, as you can see, the, the spine is a little bit, well, it's a lot damaged here, but the book is still intact. It is an older book, uh, as mentioned, it is a collector's item. Uh, several of the people, when I was looking for it, showed me uh, their copies uh, taped up <laughs> and in a various degree of, uh, of wear and tear, uh, but still something that they have held on to and you know, kept for so many years, so which should tell you the, um, you know, the, the validity of the information uh, inside of here. So. As mentioned, I've never seen this book, so we'll just take a quick page through. And so we have the Folklore, Myths, and Legends of Britain, published by the Reader's Digest Association Limited. And this was published in 1973. So, and 
and printed in Great Britain. So we have a variety of different chapters here. Uh, we have the mysterious world of nature. Uh, we have life, love, and work. Continuing on, let's get that out of the way before I cut myself. Um, gods, ghosts, and witches. And then we go into the romance of Britain. Um, so the land of Merlin, uh, probably the, a lot of the Arthurian legends and whatnot. Uh, and we go on through here. Quite the romance of Britain is a very large part. People and myth, part three. And then that, we go into the index. So quite a long introduction. And so we've got the lore of Britain, myths and legends that have endured for 2,000 years. Okay, in the mysterious world of nature. When man confronts nature and tries to tame it, he is setting himself up as the controller of the most mysterious of forces. For nature is the power that makes plants grow and animals breed. That keeps the sun in the sky and draws water from the earth and makes one season follow another, in an endless cycle. In his search for the key to nature's mystery, man has often turned to a power that he believes transcends it, the power of the supernatural. So a lot of uh, evocative artwork, uh, I would imagine, is in this book. We, you know, we've got full color pieces here, uh, Cornfield by Moonlight, the sun go god in his glory, uh, we have the different signs of the zodiac here. Uh, looks like uh, this may be uh, Roman uh, artwork. My wife would know she's the, uh, she's the art major. Uh, we have a breakdown of the uh, astrological doctor. So just going through the seasons and festivals, you can see almost immediately how this particular book, uh, my guess is you can probably open it to most any page in here, and find inspiration, uh, you know, supplement uh, pieces, uh, things that could be a companion to, you know, just about any game, to be fair. It doesn't have to be fantasy. There's stuff in here that can definitely um, support a, an, an urban fantasy setting. Well, it's still fantasy, but you know what I mean. Not your, your typical medieval setting, but uh, most anything that deals with supernatural, folklore, or myths. So... Just kind of flipping through. So it looks like it's going to break it down through different different subjects. And I, without looking at it, I don't know if there's any particular order. But um, so we've got like, it's like, for example, here we've got a description of green magic dealing with uh, uh, various uh, plants and herbology, I would imagine. And different birds and whatnot, different animals, life, love, and work. The brink of life, constant vigilance and spiritual safeguards were needed against the dark forces surrounding pregnancy and childhood. So superstitions regarding, you know, the birthing or the conception and birth of children. Ring around the roses, which if I'm not mistaken was a dance or, you know, was a nursery rhyme that deals with the, the plague years within the UK and Europe. And he loves me, he loves me not. So, so yeah, I, I mean, it's immediately, I'm, this is only page 58, and I, I could see myself sitting down with this and just devouring, you know, pages and pages and pages as, as, as I go through this. And other than the, you know, the, the spine peeling off, it seems to be in, in fairly good shape. So, you know, considering what I've seen with others, I'm, i wouldn't even try to repair this, but I could, you know, tape it to keep it in place. I don't know if that's going to evoke anybody screaming, no, there's better ways. So if there is better ways, let me know. So I'm not going to obviously go through all, God, probably 600 pages or so, but just kind of give a quick flip through. So here's, here's something that uh, deals with unique graves. Uh, the most haunted house in Scotland. The anatomy of witchcraft. various monsters, and then the, ro the romance of Britain. So the land of Merlin and a breakdown of the, uh, the various locations and whatnot. So I could see, I mean, not, not just as a child in the UK, but, you know, anywhere in the world who has this book, 
Um, if you have any sort of interest uh, in, you know, the fantastic, the supernatural, and and whatnot, it's, it I could see sitting here hours, you know, just not even reading in order, just opening it up and just randomly, you know, picking out bits of information as you're reading, you know, on a summer's day, winter's evening, waiting for your, you know, your parents to pick you up from school or most anything. Um, so yeah, so I, I, I can already see why this is such a coveted book, uh, why mo nobody <laughs> wants to get rid of theirs if they currently own it, and why people who have it um, that's uh, in kind of bad shape definitely are looking for a secondary one, because I could just hear the heartbreaking if this thing completely fell apart. But there's professional people out there that could probably, you know, rebind it. And just kind of still flipping through some more. So, The Witch Country. Spectre Saints and Heroes of the Fens. Yeah, we've been going on about 10 minutes here, so I'm not going to go through the whole thing. But just kind of wanted to spotlight this book uh, and see what all the hubbub is. And so we, we even have modern uh, information here, the doomed airship. Uh, this is not, uh, I believe this does not have to do with uh, the Hindenburg, but a different ship. And so yeah, definitely, I mean, the artwork, definitely something you can utilize, uh, you know, within a, within your campaign in the world. Um, as we see the wise men of Gotham. And so we'll just kind of flip through some more here, kind of take a bigger chunks out. So it looks like it goes through the different areas of the UK and kind of gives information, local, local folklore and whatnot. Continuing on, and I, and I can already see, uh, just picking up uh, just bits as I'm scanning this that, that I know have been utilized in, in games and whatnot, um, you know, a variety, especially a lot of the UK-centric uh, games. Yeah, the Weird Sisters of North Berwick. Stonehenge. Fabulous Creatures. And we're kind of getting almost through here. The Horseman's Word. Home of the Queen Mother. Castle of Mary. Um, a caster, a caster, a castle's spectral helpers. And what are we on here? We're dealing with people of myth. Very cool. Just love the variety of artwork in here. Scotland the Brave. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, water metal with me was the watchword of the men who made Scotland free. Yeah, I completely bastardized that. Skull of Robert the Bruce. And so... Yeah, sorry about a lot of dead dead air here. Just just kind of flipping through the book, but trying to keep the commentary going. And yes, of course, you know, an index, a wide variety of acknowledgments, I would imagine. And we are at the end. Okay, flipping that over. So there we have it: folklore, myths, and legends of Britain. Definitely something that I'm going to be going through bit by bit here, uh, especially during the holidays. This, this is like the perfect book uh, for me to sit down with and, you know, read if I'm, you know, just, just relaxing during the day or during the evening when it's, you know, during the holidays or maybe, uh, you know, get through a few chapters before bedtime. Uh, definitely going to be a bedside book for a while now. So, so there we go. So this was definitely another completely unprofessional unboxing and I hope that the sound turned out okay on this 
Uh, so please definitely give me uh, you know your opinion if it doesn't sound good, and also um, any other suggestions that you may have. Uh, so just just looking you know to like anybody, uh, just like to improve what I'm doing, uh, grow uh, you know this whatever this this channel is <laughs> as as I you know as my skills improve and whatnot, trying to improve upon it a little bit, but but never giving up the knife ever. Uh, that's always going to be part of it. Um, so, uh, hope you enjoyed that little page through of folklore, myths, and legends of Britain. And uh, good luck finding one. Because <laughs> uh, unless you want to put out a, a hefty fee, not just for the book itself, and but including the, the wonderfully new outrageous uh, international shipping costs, uh, I don't see this coming over to the United States anytime soon. So, my name is Scott. And this has been yet another completely unprofessional unboxing. I know I've already said that, but hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care.